Today is Mahatma Gandhi's birth anniversary. And if you don't know, Mahatma Gandhi in the Indian context is known as father of the nation, ironically so for this particular video. What I want to evaluate is, was Mahatma Gandhi an anti-natalist? Now, Mahatma Gandhi did have four children. He had four sons. So definitely he was not child free. But he could have turned anti-natalist later on or at least there are some quotes which indicate some in some way or form that he had some inclinations or he thought in an antinatalistic way. Let's have a look at these quotes. Before I start on those quotes, it is important to note that I have not looked at the context in which these quotes have been made. That should be a subject for a whole different research. For now, I'm just reading the quotes and commenting on them. Suppose for a moment that all procreation stops. It will only mean that all destruction will cease. Moksha is nothing but release from cycle of births and deaths. This alone is believed to be the highest bliss and rightly. Mahatma Gandhi Collected Words, Volume 23, 1958. Now, if you don't know, moksha is a concept in the religion of Hinduism, which is sort of a liberation from all of this suffering in the world and that should be or it is prescribed to be the highest ideal everybody should have and what he's saying is to attain moksha you really have to stop procreation nobody is born nobody will die nobody will suffer so this quote i think is very anti -natalist. the ideal brahmachari had not to struggle with sensual desire or desire for procreation it never troubles him at all the whole world will be to him one vast family he will center all his ambition in relieving the mystery of mankind and the desire for procreation will be to him as gall and wormwood mahatma gandhi collected works volume 13 1968 now the concept of brahmachari if you don't know brahmachari is someone who has given up all his material desires he doesn't he is not pulled by those desires is the Brahm Brahmachari. Mahatma Gandhi is saying that the Brahmachari is the one who does not have sensual desires and desire for procreation. Now, in his day and age, the separation between sex and procreation wasn't as clear as it is today. And he many a times has combined these two things together. So we can be a little lenient for this particular view. But what he's saying is an ideal Brahmachari or an ideal person, let us say, would direct all his ambition towards relieving the misery of mankind and desire for procreation would be something like a wormwood to him. Now, this is, at least to me, it sounds very antinatalist. Next, if destruction is violence, creation too is violence. Procreation therefore involves violence. The creation of what is bound to perish certainly involves violence. Mahatma Gandhi Collected Works, Volume 32, 1969. I don't think I need to explain anything on this. Fairly self-explanatory that this is very anti-natalistic. The last one. What shall I write? If I say that is good, it would be a lie. If I express sorrow, it would be violence. I would only say and wish that you learn to control your senses. Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi's Passion, The Life and Legacy of Mahatma Gandhi, 2002. This letter is to his nephew, Changalal's wife, Kashi, who had just given birth to a daughter. Now, over here, he is referring to control the senses, which problem is more towards sexual desire than towards the desire to procreation. But even then, I think he is not celebrating the birth of their daughter. So those are the quotes based on which I think that Mahatma Gandhi had some antinatalistic inclinations.